everyone, my name's Heidi Postel. Welcome back to A Plus Maths. The last type of chart that we can get to draw a weighted network would be what's called an activity chart. This is much more specific than the other graphs that I showed you. These will tell you that you have particular activities, A, B, C and D. Sometimes, not always, it will tell you what the activity is. So here we're doing our homework, we're revising our notes, you're watching one of my videos, you're doing some more questions, and then you're marking your work. Over here it will tell you the time that it takes to do each activity. Remember the time, this would be the waiting on each of our edges, wouldn't it? And the total time that it would take to, to do the entire activity would be the sum of all the times because we would need to go through each one to finish it. That would be 135 minutes. That would be the total time. And then over here, and this is probably the tricky part of the whole chart, is what's called an immediate predecessor. An immediate predecessor tells us where we need to start from. So I like to think of this as start from start from here and we go to here so let's see how we would draw this activity chart as an actual network so here it's telling us that you need to start from the beginning this is where you start from it would take 50 minutes to do activity A so we start from a point and we know that activity A will take 50 minutes. So that's how we're going to write it. Then from activity A, so we know that all of that time there, now we've completed activity A. So to get to activity B, that activity would take 30 minutes. Then from B, there's the end of B, to get to C would take 15 minutes. And I can go in any direction I like as long as I'm sort of continuing to move forward. Then to get activity D from C, there's the end of C, now I've finished the activity for C, it would take 30 minutes to complete activity D. And then to mark the work it would take 10 minutes and I've reached the end. So you could draw these in any shape as long as you continue to move forward because that's what we're doing. We're going from one to the next to the next. And you would write, ah, so activity A took 50 minutes, activity B took 30 minutes, etc., etc. These can get quite tricky. So let's go through lots of examples so that you can get the hang of all the different types. So here is another activity chart that we're going to draw as a network graph. I'm going to label it the way that I like to. I'm not going to call it a predecessor because I find that very confusing. That's fine, whatever they've labeled the question in the, in, on the piece of paper in the textbook, that's fine. But I'm going to write from here to here. So I'm going from here to here. And of course these lines here tell me where I need to start. So I start here. And I always need to finish or end over there. And remember what we're doing. We are going from A to D. From B to e. That's what this all means. So if you're having trouble understanding the chart, write it down a few times while you're starting and learning so that you can get it into your head and then it becomes second nature. From C to F. Now this is interesting because this means from E and D to G. And what that really means is that E and D must be the same point. 
So we'll worry about E and D up here, and we're going to make those two end up at the same point, because eventually the two of those need to go to G. And then we're going from G to H. Let's have a look. I know this is very confusing, but once you see it, hopefully you'll understand it better. So we know that we have to start from a starting point, and then we have to go from our starting point to A, B, and C. So we can start at a point. I like to call it my starting point. And then I need to have three activities coming from that starting point. There are three options. It can be either A or B or C. And I can choose which route I go on first, A, B, and C. Then I go from A to D. So from option A, I can get to activity D. I can't get there from any of the others, from A to D. Now just so that I don't forget where I'm up to, I might just tick them off as I go. I'm up to this one, from activity B to activity E. From activity B, that's the end of activity B, I can get to activity E. Then from activity C, I can get to activity F. So good so far. Then E and D can go to activity G. From E, D, go to G. Now remember, I did say to you that this bit was a little bit tricky. Because from E and D, you can get to the point G. Now, that actually means, this actually means that you have to have E and D together to get to the point G. You can't just, you can't have a choice of or E or D. It has to be the point that joins E and D together, which means that I actually have to join these two together. So D should be like that, E should be like that, which makes the op G has to come from D and E. Then from G I can get to H, activity H. And because F is just sitting there in the middle of nowhere, of course we can't just leave him in the middle of nowhere. After doing F, you would end, so we can join that up straight to H. And that's how you would do it. So be aware that when you have two predecessors, E, D to G, if the easiest way to do that usually is to join them together into one point. So let's have a look at another one, question number three. Again, I know that I'm starting from here. In the end, I get to H, which is all the way down here. These are your predecessors. This is where you're starting from, and you're going to the letters over there. This is our starting point. We go from A to B, from A to C, from C to D, from B to E. Remember, this is the same point. So we know, if we plan a little bit ahead, that E and D have to be the same point. They're up here, E and D. So we might want to think about that while we're doing the network graph. From F to G, and from G to H. Remember, we're only writing this down to help us at the beginning. Once you get better at it, you're not going to need to write all that, all those words down. Pick a point to start. And then we need to go from our starting point, we can do activity A. From activity A, we can get to B and to C. So from activity A, there are two options. We can either go to activity B or we can go to activity C. Then from activity C, 
we can go to D. And from activity B, we can go to E. But I remember thinking that E and D had to be the same point from when we were writing them down. And that's why I've got E and D going to the same point. Because the next one says that E and D need to go to F. So that now can go to activity F. F can go to G. And G can go to H. F goes to G and G goes to H. Now, because our network graph is moving from the start to the end, we really should be putting arrows on everything to indicate the direction in which our activities are going. And then you can write end or finish when we're done. Let's try another one with everything together. So let's have a look at number four. It's a lot longer than the other ones that we've done, but as long as we stick to our method and we do it methodically and we think about what's going to happen first so that we're planning ahead, then we should be fine. Let's take a look. We know we're starting here. We're starting there. We know we're ending down here. We know that I and J should be the same point and E and F should be the same point. And we should try to think about that first while we're doing the actual graph on the right so that we are prepared for it when we get there. Same point. And just keep that in mind that when we're doing I and J, they should go to the same point. And when we're doing E, activity E and activity F, they also should go to the same point. We also should notice here that I've actually added an extra column and this is our time column and this is where our waiting networks comes in. Not only are we now going to draw a network graph from this activity chart, but we're also going to put the weightings on every activity that we have and we're going to get those weights from the list here. Let's start. We know that from the starting point, we need to go to activities A and B. Activity A and activity B. And activity A has a time of five, and activity B has a time of one. So we just put those numbers next to them. Let's keep going. From activity A, we go to C. And from activity B, we go to D. And I forgot to tick them off. And if I, that's always a little bit dangerous. And I haven't done my times. So to get from activity A to C, that's two. And from B to D, that's three. From activity C to E is eight. Don't forget that E and F had to be the same point. So I'm trying to remember that. And D to F, remembering that E and F should have ended up at the same point. And D to F, activity F was one. Now from that point E, F, which I've got now is here, I can go to G and that should take four. Then from G to H, and that should have taken six. Then what do I have? I have H to I and H to J. So H has to go to I and J, but I and J have to be the same point. Now that's a bit strange, isn't it? Because how can I have I and J being two separate activities, but they have to go to the same point? Well, that's impossible, isn't it? And that's where I need to put in what's called a dummy. They have to be connected to each other, but I can't separate them and I can't join them. 
They both have to go to separate places. It has to go to I and it has a completely different time than J, which is 2. But from both of these points, I can get to K. And I join them by putting a dummy from one to the other. And then from this point, I would go to K. Good luck and see you next time. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Have fun.